After nine years, this Prime Minister is not worth the drugs, dis disorder, death, and destruction. Welcome to the political arena, where words are weapons and debates are battlegrounds. Today, we witness the indomitable Pierre Pauli Evra stride onto the stage, a lion among sheep, ready to tear into the fabric of liberal policy with the ferocity of a hungry predator. With a thunderous roar, Polly Averett unleashes his opening volley, his words dripping and disdain as he lays bare the failures of the Liberal government. Like a surgeon wielding a scalpel, he dissects their policies with surgical precision, leaving no stone unturned and no misstep unpunished. But wait, who dares to challenge the lion in his den? It's none other than the Minister for Mental Health and Addiction. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we answered the call of the BC government when they requested the exemption on decriminalization of personal possession of certain illicit drugs. Mr. Speaker, what is driving this overdose crisis is the illegal drug supply. Every life lost is a tragedy. I met with Minister Whiteside this past Friday. We are reviewing their exemption request. Mr. Speaker, we have a clear lens on public health and public safety because we have a plan. They do not. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Stepping into the fray with all the confidence of a lamb approaching the slaughter, let the verbal justing commence. He's wasting time while people are dying. In the year after this radical prime minister granted the decriminalization of crack, heroin, and other hard drugs in parks and hospitals, 2,500 people died. The overdose death in the nine years of this prime minister have tripled to the fastest rising of the 11 countries studied by the Commonwealth Fund. Nurses are afraid to go to work because they have to put up with addicts using meth, crack, and weapons in their hospital room. Even nurses are having to give up on breastfeeding because they're worried their kids will be contaminated with the drugs they breathed in. What the hell are they thinking over there? The Honourable Member... As a long-time member of this House, I'll just ask him to withdraw the, the just withdraw the uh, offensive word because it is not parliamentary. I withdraw because they're not thinking over there. The honourable government. With the skill of a seasoned gladiator, Polly Avery launches his verbal onslaught. Each word a razor-sharp blade aimed at the heart of liberal ideology. He skewers their handling of the overdose crisis, their incompetence laid bare for all to see. The minister, like a deer caught in the headlights, stammers and stutters in the face of Polly Evra's relentless barrage. But he is undeterred, pressing his advantage with the precision of a master tactician, leaving no room for doubt as to the gravity of the situation. Well, government house leader. Mr. Speaker, last week we saw the Leader of the Opposition once again encourage supporters of white supremacy, anarchy and misogyny. This has been a regular occurrence. He draws the admiration of people who dismiss the slaughter of children in our schools. The Leader of the Opposition... Thank you for the box. I'm going to invite the government house leader to, uh, to, to start from the top and to choose his words very carefully so that they do not cause disorder in the house. Mr. Speaker, last week we saw the leader of the opposition once again visit with supporters of white supremacy, anarchy and misogyny. This has been a regular occurrence. 
He draws the admiration of people who dismiss the slaughter of children in schools. The leader of the opposition now has 30 seconds to speak to this House and to Canadians once I sit down. I ask him to clearly disavow the views of these dangerous people. Will he do that? That is an Order. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Holly Ever is unyielding, his resolve unshakable, as he continues to hammer home his points with the force of a battering ram. The of the opposition. I unequivocally disavow the guy who spent the first half of his adult life as a practicing racist dressing up in blackface. Accepted the support of Hamas, and now he's he's brought on the extremist and radical position of allowing legal drug use in playgrounds, in hospitals, in coffee shops that has led to the mass death of our people. Will he not refuse the demand of Toronto to replicate the decriminalization nightmare? <laughs> As the debate reaches its climax, Polly Every delivers his coup de grace, a scathing indictment of liberal policy that leaves no room for doubt. He condemns their incompetence, their corruption, their utter disregard for the welfare of the Canadian people, his words like a hammer blow to the very foundations of the government. government house leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm sad to say the leader of the Conservatives, the opposition, has shown us his true colours. He speaks without conviction and clarity on a question that should be very, very, very simple for him to address. His silence speaks volumes. This is not leadership, Mr. Speaker. This is political cowardice. Not content to merely claim victory, he seeks to bury his opponents beneath an avalanche of truth and righteousness. After nine years, this Prime Minister is not worth the drugs, dis disorder, death and destruction. In May of 2022, he granted the BC NDP government's request for a criminal code exemption to allow crack, meth, heroin and fentanyl use Shame. in parks, coffee shops, hospitals, beaches. Overdose deaths since exploded to a record smashing 2,500 lost lives. The BC NDP government has reversed course and asked the federal government to recriminalize some hard drugs. Why won't this Prime Minister recriminalize these deaths? The Honourable Minister for And so, as the dust settles and the echoes of the debate fade into the ether, one thing is abundantly clear. Pierre Poly Evre has emerged victorious, his words serving as a rallying cry for all those who seek to hold the Liberal government to account.